The deep veins of the leg lie deep to the fascial layer of the leg within the muscular compartment. The deep veins transport most of the blood leaving the leg, so they are vital to the healthy circulation of blood in the leg. Obstruction caused by deep vein thrombosis is the commonest condition to affect the deep veins. This is important because deep vein thrombosis can lead to pulmonary embolism and death. The accurate assessment of the deep veins is vital if DVT is suspected. In addition, abnormalities of the deep veins are common after recovery from DVT and these may influence how superficial venous reflux and varicose veins are treated. In this episode, Michelle Moore demonstrates the correct positioning of the patient, a standardised sequence to the conduct of the examination, the key anatomical landmarks, and she once again emphasises the key points in optimisation of the image and flow settings. If you would like to have a transcript of this video with explanatory notes, please send me an email. The address is below and it is repeated at the end of this episode please be sure to state which episode notes you wish to receive. Initially, before any treatment can commence on any superficial um, varicose veins, we need to ensure that the deep venous system is normal. Um, any history of obviously, previous DVTs is, is significant um, and we must assess that. Uh, we start obviously from the groin crease again and work down to the level just below the knee to ensure that there's no deep venous trauma um, to remove the superficial system. If there was a deep venous problem, it would make matters a whole lot worse. So we're going to start again at the level of the Mickey Mouse as described previously. This is at the level of the groin crease, plenty of jelly. So as you can see, Dave's lying in a supine position now, which is absolutely fine for this test. The leg is slightly turned out towards me because the vein runs down the medial aspect of the leg. This makes it much more comfortable for the patient and much easier access for us. So we're going to start the level of the groin crease. Okay, so we've identified our Mickey Mouse sign again. So what we're going to do, is just with a light little bit of compression, is we're going to push down. Is that okay for mm -hmm. you? It's not too much. And what we can see is the vein compressing completely. The little vessel adjacent to this is the artery. And we can see that doesn't compress completely because of the elasticity of the walls. But we're also seeing nice compression of that long saphenous vein at the top there as well. So to demonstrate this, we can divide our screen into two. And we can have compression on one of the images with the other image showing a nice dilated common femoral vein. So what we're going to do is work down the leg and at one centimetre markers we're just going to compress the common femoral vein coming into the superficial femoral vein or femoral vein all the way down and we can see beautiful compression. Any clot within that vein would allow the vein not to be compressible and we'd pick that up nice and easily. So optimization of the image again very important we're getting deeper now down the femoral vein, which we can see here, the little artery on top. We need our focal zone, the area of interest, and a significant depth to be able to work our way down. So just coming down now to the distal femoral vein, and that's compressing beautifully all the way down to the bottom. So now we go back up to the groin crease again, and we're going to turn our probe 90 degrees into a longitudinal position. And again, we can see that lovely common femoral vein. We're yeah. going to use colour flow now. And to optimise our colour flow, we need to obviously angle our box to pick up the best of the colour flow. There's a little artery just flicking in there. So you can see by angling that box already, we're getting nice vessel flow through the common femoral vein. You can also do Valsalva manoeuvre at this point. That's going to demonstrate that there is no superficial clots higher up from this point and again demonstrate the nice competency of that deep venous system. What I'm going to get you to do Dave is breathe in and I want you to sort of hold your breath, keep your mouth closed and blow into your cheeks like this and mm -hmm. bear down okay and that's going to stop the blood flow coming back down the leg by closing those valves off all right so we're going to have a go at that. So select pulse wave. Okay when you're ready just take a nice deep breath in. Now we need to push down hard as you can. Push, 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 push. 
Fantastic and relaxed, well done. So it, that's fabulous. Okay, so we can see complete cessation of flow here. And then when Dave relaxed, you can see that nice wash of blood going back up towards your heart, which is demonstrated. Nice competency of those deep veins. So we're gonna follow the femoral vein coming down into the superficial femoral vein. Again, angling our color flow box to pick up that beautiful flow. So here we can see the divide into the profunda femoral vein and the femoral vein. To reverse flow, you prefer to keep it in one colour. Most machines provide that facility. So coming down, the nice phasic flow being represented. Again, if you wanted to demonstrate the flow, little calf squeeze, or just again, demonstrate the flow beautifully within that deep system. Again, we can reduce our pulse repetition frequency or our scale just to help demonstrate full vessel flow and also increasing the overall color gain. Gives us a much nicer image of that femoral vein there coming down. Okay. So we know we've got no above knee DVT. So what we need to do now is have a little look in the popliteal vein. So what I'm gonna get you to do is just to roll a little bit onto your side towards me. Fantastic. So again, starting in the posterior knee crease in a nice transverse position is going to be best to pick up your popliteal vein, which we can see just in here. And again, compress onto that vein and ensure full compression. Come up a little bit higher to ensure overlap. With the distal femoral vein, we can see we've come right the way up down into that popliteal vein lovely compression and we're going to turn into the longitudinal section we can actually see a little valve working nicely in here as well put our color flow on and you can see full vessel flow within the popliteal vein fantastic Above knee DVTs are obviously the most significant and we really need to exclude those. If you feel confident enough, we can have a look at the calf veins as well. So what we look for is the posterior tibial and the peroneal veins. To pick those up, if you get your tibia in view on the screen, and what we're going to look for is the posterior tibial and peroneal veins that lie in the fascial plane. So we just need a little bit more depth and we just need to reduce our frequency just to give us a little bit more penetration to identify the calf veins. So the peroneal veins lie just on top of the fibula. These can be identified here. And again, compression of those veins with a probe in a transverse position demonstrates good compression. Again, turning your probe 90 degrees shows beautiful peroneal vein. Angling our color box significantly to pick up the best flow within the veins. We can also We can also reduce our box size to ensure that the best flow volume is picked up within that area. So just reduce our colour gain down a little bit, a bit of aliasing just there. And then we're going to do a nice little squeeze and we can see flow within the peroneal vein. The posterior tibial vein, and it's a little bit more superficial. Peroneal veins being there, nice and deep. And posterior tibials, you can see just underneath the fascial plane, just there. We can compress, holding onto the lateral edge of the calf for a bit of stability as well. And again, turning into 90 degrees into the longitudinal section.
It's like paired calf veins, nice squeeze. And we saw both of those posterior tibial veins filling beautifully. And you can see the posterior tibial artery is pulsating away in the middle there as well.